Welcome to the Teachers on Fire podcast, where I profile agents of growth and transformation in education today. Each guest shares their highs, their lows, their passions, their goals, and the resources that are shaping their thinking and inspiring their practice. For show notes and links from each episode, visit teachersonfire.net. You can also follow the show at Teachers on Fire on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And of course, please do subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Classtime.com, an assessment platform that delivers learning insights, giving you more time to teach. Classtime helps you gain immediate visibility of your students' learning progress, build engaging lessons, share with other teachers, and create your own tech-enabled questions to complement your lesson plans. Classtime.com also helps you engage all students with collaborative challenges and puzzles that make fun an integral part of the learning experience. Check out Classtime.com and start for free today. I'm your host, Tim Cavey. Let's meet today's guest. Today, I'm speaking with Justin Belt. Justin is a husband, father of five, teacher of thousands. He's an aspiring leader, innovator, and I'm proud to say he's part of our great writing team over at the Teachers on Fire magazine on Medium. Last but not least, Justin is the host and producer of The Why Cast, a podcast about finding your why. Follow Justin on Twitter at class underscore class, Mr. underscore B, and follow his podcast at T-Y-Cast. That's T-W-H-Y-C-A-S-T, T-Y-Cast. Justin, thanks so much for coming on the show today, man. Are you ready to talk education? I am, and I'm really excited uh, because your podcast was one of the initial inspirations for me starting my own, so I'm glad to be here. Well, you've tweeted that out, Justin, and that makes me feel so good every time, and I hope that Teachers on Fire has that effect on many. Yesterday, I was engaging with teachers about doing student podcasting in the classroom, which is another exciting space to get into. But let's start out, Justin, by talking about your situation. Now, you've just completed this big move this summer, and I've followed some of that on Twitter and Facebook. So talk to us about the move and tell us about the context you're getting into this fall. All right. So for the past 13 years, we lived in Joplin, Missouri. Uh, and I'd worked at Web City Junior High, which was uh, really formative for me. They hired me as a 32-year-old with no teaching experience. Uh, and I just, I loved it. Loved it there. Loved my school. Loved my admin and the students especially. But now we have moved to the great state of Texas. And I don't have the Texas draw yet. So, <laughs> uh, but we live in a town called Frisco, but I'll be working in a town called Carrollton uh, at a school called Newman Smith High School. Go Trojans. Um, it is, from what I can tell so far, I haven't met many of my coworkers yet, uh, but it really appears to be a, a welcoming uh, situation. Uh, so here's hoping that I'm ready for them and that they're ready for me because I'm a little bit of a different kind of teacher. I'll be teaching high school English. Uh, English 1, and I'll be teaching, I believe, a section of pre-AP English as well. That'll be fun to compare notes with you as we get into the year, and lots of great friends of the show coming from that area of Texas, so I know you're in a great spot and great things are ahead. So Justin, it's story time. You're familiar with the show and you know where we start here. Talk to us about a low moment or some kind of an experience of adversity that you faced somewhere in your teaching or education career and describe how you overcame it. I can say with a complete measure of confidence that this last school year was the hardest school year that I'd ever had. Hmm. Uh, some of my, you know, as teachers, we have this shtick that we kind of, uh, we go with, you know, how to keep our kids uh, on task and everything. Uh, I had the hardest time connecting with and what I think was uh, affecting the the right amount of change with the students that I just had. Now, I had students who were great, the students had the, the students who knew how to do school, uh, the students who liked being at school, but it seemed that I had a lot of students who just could care less about what I was teaching, uh, could care less about being there and being a part of any type of classroom community. And that was hard. 
Uh, that was really, really hard. I would talk with my coworkers. I'd talk with my admin and get different ideas to bounce off of them. Uh, but what eventually I came to was the old adage that we can't change someone else. We can only change ourselves. Uh, so it took a lot of self-reflection uh, but I began to change the way that I related to these kids, not from the basis of other classes that I've had and what's worked and what's not worked, but I really had to take this class as a singular moment of students with singular interests and passions that were unlike any who had come before. Uh, and once I did that, the school year, it, it really opened up and, you know, really engaging the students, this class for who they actually are instead of who I might have thought them to be or wished that they were, that created so much more of a community that by the end of the year, I was sad that we had to let our time together go uh, because we'd really formed some amazing relationships. And I'll tell anybody that I'm probably an average instructional teacher, uh, but my strength, at least I think, comes in building relationship and establishing uh, community. So if the community is off, uh, then everything else that happens in my classroom is off. So it was very important to me to find some type of synergy and relationship with this class of students for who they were. Uh, and once I did that, it was uh, we had a really great time for the remainder of the school year. What a fantastic story. I love that turnaround and some of the realizations that you experienced along the way, Justin. You know, it makes me think of a tweet that I saw recently. I think it was from Amy Fast, and it was sort of to the effect that the most important instructional strategy in the classroom is relationships. On the one hand, we, we sort of see cliches like that thrown around a lot in edu twitter but it's so true and it's so critical and i had some of the same struggles as well to be honest last year in my practice so going into this fall you talk about getting to know the actual class the actual kids in your room what is one strategy that you're going to try to stick to consistently to try to build that rapport this year with your new group okay so I'm teaching high school students for the first time, and I'd be lying if I didn't say that it was a bit nerve wracking just because it's something that I've never done before. And I'm also, you know, in teaching, we have all these strategies and formal names for things. But for me, I try to keep things simple because a lot of times that's the only way that I can relate. But for me, as far as getting to know the kids, the strategy that I use, I just talk to them. I have never been afraid throughout my entire teaching career to ditch the lesson plan and we just have a classroom discussion on whatever it's burning in their hearts in that moment. Now, that was easy, you know, in eighth grade when credits didn't matter and all this stuff. Uh, so I don't know how often I'll be able to do that in high school, but it's still at, at, at my heart that I need to create a space that the students know that I'm not tied to any lesson plan. Uh, if their social or emotional needs come first, then that's what I want to address. I want our community to be one where we can support and uphold one another. Where they can even do that for me, I think sometimes as teachers, we don't allow, we don't think our students have the capacity to help us out when we're having a bad day. Uh, and I think that when we don't expect that from them. When we don't create that opportunity, then they won't. Uh, but if we get them to a point where, hey, I'm as much a human as you are. Uh, can I talk to you about something that's bothering me? Nothing, you know, like super personal, but I might come in on the first day and say, you all, you're nervous to be here. I'm nervous to be here. So let's talk about that. And that goes a very long way. So just discussion, being a real <laughs> human being as a teacher with real human beings who are students. Well, if the warmth that we see from you on Twitter is any indication, Justin, I know you're going to have no problem building relationships with these new kids. So blessings on you as you get started in this new community and in high school. That's exciting times ahead, right? Yes. Something I'll be transparent and say, I want to do a better job of engaging before the first bell. Last year, in my context, there was this 25-minute gap between the doors opening and the first bell of the day, and it just 
felt like there were always, always things to do at my computer. And, you know, I'm sort of running around trying to make sure everything is set to go for the day. And I feel like I miss too many valuable moments to just engage in casual conversations one on one with those kids that would start wandering into my classroom. So I'm going to try to do a better job of that. You can hold me accountable this year, brother, and I'll try to do the same. Absolutely. So, Justin, on February 20 of this year, if I have that right, you published your first episode of The Ycast, an amazing podcast. Everyone here needs to subscribe. Talk to us about your why for launching the podcast. What can educators expect to get when they listen? I have wanted to do a podcast for a long time, uh, but I convinced myself that maybe I didn't have anything to say that anybody would listen to. And as I really began to dig in with this group of students about uh, the importance of sharing that voice, uh, I figured that the best way for me to exemplify that for them would be to really explore my own voice. And at my heart, Tim, I am an encourager of people. I like to find the best parts in people and just speak to that and encourage them to bring that out, to share it with the world. And so that's where the Ycast was born. I I really feel like my purpose is to encourage, to inspire, to motivate. I want people to find that why, to find that burning thing within them that won't let them rest or that pushes them to do great things in their jobs, in their communities. And so what I would hope is that an educator listening to the podcast would be able to go back and access that first love. Like what was that first moment when you knew that you wanted to become a teacher or that that moment that you had in a classroom where you realized, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Because when you can access your why, when you can freely access it and bring it forward uh, in any context, in any moment, uh, then everything that we do in a classroom, in a school building, takes on a greater significance. And so I love talking with people to get their stories, to to find out more about what their why is and what context their why exists in. I've talked with chefs and business owners. I've spoken with teachers. This has been really, really good for me personally because it's helped to confirm maybe why I am the way that I am, but it's also given me a lens into the power of purpose. Like it's limitless, boundless energy, uh, that if we can just hold on to it, then we can really shape our world or shape the world into the best possible iteration of itself. I really, really believe that. Wow. I just got chills there, brother. That was pure gold. And I'm committed to rediscovering and re-exploring my own why. You know, lately, my wife's been listening to Simon Sinek's Start With Why. I'm sure you're familiar with that one. I've seen... Oh, yeah. (laughs) I've seen the YouTube video. I have not read his book, but I've been listening to his voice a lot. As, like I said, my wife's been playing his audio book. And we hear a lot about it, but we need to really unpack that inner purpose, don't we? And you put it so well. That's where the fire comes from. It is. So, Justin, let's get practical for a moment. There are so many educators out there like you who want to take that brave step of finding their own voice and launching their own podcast. So on the logistical and technical side, what was it like to put together your own podcast and what advice would you give other educators looking to do the same? My advice would be to just do it. Don't worry about the quality of the equipment that you have. Don't worry about having the most polished or well put together script. Let's do it. Because I ran myself ragged trying to figure out what equipment that I needed. And ultimately, I started my podcast with a $10 microphone and some headphones that I borrowed from the computer lab at school, uh, which probably they probably got it, you know, like uh, $1.50 to $2 a pop. That's what I started with. I've upgraded just a little bit, but with five kids, I mean, I can't go out and buy, you know, a lot of different things or whatever. Uh, so I've, I've just committed to with whatever I have to podcast with, I'm just going to do my best. And so, you know, 
when I had my students fourth quarter this year, they did student interest podcasts uh, and they were always like, Mr. Belt, we don't have quality technology. I said, that might be true, but you have a quality story that needs to be told. And so any educator, anybody out there who's thinking about doing a podcast, you have a story to tell. It's embedded inside of you. So just do it. Mm. Even if you're recording it from your phone, uh, just do the podcast and get it out there. The logistics and technical sites, you'll grow into that as you do more and more. Uh, but I fear that by waiting, that's just one more story that the world needs to hear that it doesn't get to hear. I couldn't agree more. And I think that message is so inspiring. And I look forward to more episodes. Justin, I know you've been busy lately, but I know you're going to get back on the mic and keep sharing your voice. And we look forward to that. Justin, as you look across your PLN, and you've been active there and growing quickly, I might add. So as you look across your PLN, what sets you on fire about education today? What sets me on fire about education today is the absolute dedication of teachers and administrators to building relationships. Uh, and it's not just the teacher-student relationship. It's the, the cultivating of the admin to teacher relationship. Man, that's so important. I'm, I'm not a, a school administrator. I am actually finishing my last class to get my master's in ed leadership. So at some point, I'm in no rush, but at some point, I would like to go into school administration. But just seeing from the people that I interact with on a daily basis, aside from all of the SEL and the, you know, all the other things, you know, project-based learning and genius hour and all of these amazing things that are coming down the pipe, just seeing how many teachers and administrators are so focused on the power of leveraging a relationship. That that gives me hope, man. Really, it, it gives me hope. I'll, I'll tell anybody that in our classrooms, in our schools, that may be the only time that a child hears that they're special uh, that may be the only time that a child is affirmed or told that they're loved. So it's important that we don't just dedicate our time in school to meeting standards because a kid's not going to meet a standard if they don't believe that you believe in them. So seeing so many people having so many discussions about ways that they can give students choice and engage the student voice, man, that is right up my alley. And I get excited just talking about it right now. <laughs> Love it. Justin, how are you looking to grow professionally and improve your practice this next year? Now, you talked about moving into high school. Is there something specific that you're looking to try for the first time, or do you have your sights set on a particular growth goal? Uh, I just recently got a look at the curriculum for next year, and I know we have a planning uh, meeting coming up this week as well. I think what I really want to focus in on aside from the whole relationship piece, is I want to do my best to understand the curriculum enough to be able to tailor it to meet my students' individual goals. And, you know, I, I've never been a huge curriculum person. I understand the reason for it. I know that it's important. But kind of now having a, a fresh start, a new start, uh, what I'm really looking forward to is is digging deep with the curriculum to understand kind of uh, why we're doing what we're doing, and then kind of taking that and reconstructing it into something that fits me, uh, that will fit my students. So I've already told my uh, mentor and instructional coach, get ready, because I'm going to be bothering you a whole lot over the course of this year. Uh, you may hear me screaming in panic from our room upstairs, but I, I want to nail down that curriculum piece. Uh, I think that's going to be really important in helping these students grow into young adulthood, into college, trade school, whatever they decide to do. Justin, outside of education, what's another area of learning for you? What is it that ignites your passions when you leave the classroom? And what is it that brings you alive as a human being? Let's pull back the curtains on what kind of a person you are and share with us about some of your passions. Well, I am a lover of music. I actually have a degree in music, a liberal arts degree in music vocal performance. So I've been trained, classically trained, and I've done some opera uh, overseas. And uh, so music still plays a huge role in what I do. I even bring my guitar to class and we make up songs uh, every now and then. Uh, I'm also, I love 
to write. Uh, this summer has completely gotten me off of my my groove, but I love to blog. I love to write poetry. One day, one day, I hope to actually write a book. But yeah, music and writing are my favorite things to do. Big family person, so wrestling with the boys and going to dance practices, rehearsals with the girls, those are big. Oh, and I love to cook. I'm a huge foodie. <laughs> I love to cook. I, I will come home and I will cook dinner, and that is my way of decompressing. That's my therapy. So, <laughs> yeah, music, writing, and food. Really like the writing, and we've seen some great stuff from you on Medium and look forward to more as well. So, that's a pretty awesome package that you've got going on there. And opera singer. That is incredible. That doesn't surprise me, Justin. You're, you've are you got an amazing radio voice, and I'm sure you rock it on the opera stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's been years ago. I'm not sure I could still rock it now, but, you know, that's why we have our glory days, right? Just before we continue, I want to share an important message from the Teach Better team. Are you looking to reach more students, innovate your instruction, and teach better? Then join the Teach Better team on November 8th and 9th in Northeast Ohio for the first ever Teach Better conference. Join dynamic educators such as Dave Burgess, Tall Tal Thompson, Adam Welcome, and more. Register now at teachbetterconference.com. When you do, be sure to use discount code FIRE50, that's FIRE50, to save $50 on either of the two-day registration options. Once again, that's teachbetterconference.com. Are you ready to be better? All right, Justin, it's time for your quick picks. And here we want to know the education voices and resources that are shaping your practice and really inspiring your thinking today. So we talked about Twitter. Tell us about someone there that we should follow and share why they've been inspiring you lately. So one person would be uh, Vernon Wright, uh, the, uh, at the right leader on, uh, on Twitter. Man, this is a guy with boundless energy. Uh, and when I read his, his tweets, he is challenging. Like I know he has Disrupt at TV and every other thing that he works with, but just taking him at his tweets, uh, he challenges me to consistently be my best. No excuses, no, you know, no reasons why not. But everything that he puts out there is a challenge to uh, be, to just be your best. Uh, and another person that I really love is Dr. Eric Thomas and his Twitter handle. Uh, it escapes me right now, but this is a guy who he used to be homeless, but he's built his life into one where he routinely gets out and encourages and inspires and motivates people. And at my heart, that's what I relate to at the most. Uh, his videos are, I mean, they make you want to get up and quite literally run through a wall. That's just how pumped up uh, his message gets you. So those would be two people who've had a big role in developing me. Plus, Vernon lives in Texas, so I'm hoping to be able to sit down with him and have some coffee in the next couple of weeks. That's right. I just saw a picture of Vernon with another friend of the show, Joshua Stamper, and, and he's another great Texas guy. And Vernon has agreed to come on Teachers on Fire. So I'm pretty pumped about that and connecting more with him. Oh, that's great. Justin, point us to an ed tech tool that you currently love using in your classroom or your professional practice. So we're sort of shifting things up a little bit, but is there an app or a platform that you're really excited about? Uh, yes. Flipgrid is amazing. It is a great way to get students used to hearing themselves to get them used to hearing other people and responding to what they say rather than what they write, which hits with speaking and listening standards across the board. They're able to evaluate verbal arguments, uh, which helps them to listen actively and listen to understand rather than just listening to reply. So Flipgrid uh, totally has my endorsement. Recommend a book, one that you've been reading lately, or maybe one of your all-time faves and tell us why you recommend it. All right, so a book that I have been reading off and on since about the spring is Hacking School Discipline. I have been a fan of restorative practices uh, for a long time, and uh, this book really kind of gives some practical ways that you can create a classroom culture uh, where when harm is caused, everybody takes responsibility for it 
and everybody takes responsibility for helping to fix whatever's been harmed uh, over the course of the classroom. It's all about responsibility. It's about conversations and it's about relationships. Uh, So I would totally recommend that book. You know, when you mentioned earlier, Justin, that sometimes before the learning can continue, you just need to talk to your class and hear them out. I almost referenced that book because I've just started it myself. It's going to be the book study for my staff and here in my context. And so that is so cool that you pointed that book out as well. It's good to hear a positive review of the whole thing. And then we know you're a podcast fan, Justin. Tell us about a podcast, of course, besides our great podcasts, right? Yes. (laughs) One that (laughs) tell us about one that you've got near the top of your podcast deck right now, one of your go tos. So, uh, a friend of mine who lives in Abu Dhabi, 8,000 miles away, Jeremy Williams, he has a podcast uh, called The Dismissed Podcast. uh, And in it, he really he talks to educators about their practices and he really the, his questioning style is what really is engaging to me uh, he pulls no punches he does no fluff he just goes right to the heart of the issue and so i love it because it's always a a riveting uh story also another friend of mine uh mayor Servanak, has uh, the faculty room podcast where she kind of does some of the same things, and she's a big proponent of education as well. Uh, so those are two podcasts that I love to listen to. Tell us about a YouTube channel that you enjoy and explain why. And Justin, this can be one that has been useful in the classroom or maybe one that you just find personally amusing. So John Spencer, uh, I, I ran across him because he did a book with A.J. Giuliani, about innovative practices. And he has one of the most innovative minds that I've ever come across. And he's able to express it in his art. And it's really, really good. But he has a a channel on YouTube. I think it's just called John, uh, John Spencer, if you look it up on YouTube, where he just talks about different ways to make education accessible, uh, different ways to find joy in what you do. Uh, Like, for instance, he has a video but uh, from May, that's called Let Kids Play, The Case for Recess. And all he does is just talk about the benefits for play at any age, which means a lot to me as a, you know, burgeoning high school teacher. It's a reminder to me that I need to make time for my students to play. Uh, so the John Spencer channel on YouTube is great. How awesome are those animations that he makes? Right. Man. <laughs> So good. So good. And he's actually laid out. I know he has a video just explaining his process. So I've told myself one of these days, right? The famous, the famous one of these days, I'm going to figure that out. But there you go. And when you get it, uh, teach me. (laughs) Okay. You got a deal. Justin, you've had a hectic summer, my man. So I know you haven't had a ton of extra time, but when you do catch those moments with your five children and and when the family's all together, what are you watching on Netflix right now? And, you know, I set that up with the family. Maybe what you watch with the family is a little different than what's on your own profile. (laughs) But what are you watching on Netflix these days? I just finished watching uh, season three of Stranger Things. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I I love it. It's so good it's you know the time period and everything it just brings back good memories so stranger things all right justin what are the best ways for the listeners to follow you and get more from the y cast well you said it at the beginning uh but i have two uh twitter handles uh at class underscore class mr underscore b on twitter and my podcast twitter account which i've been using more and more is at t Ycast, W-H-Y-C-A-S-T. Those are primarily the best ways to contact me. I'm also on Voxer. Um, I'm still learning my way around it, but it is a, a very, a very great way of interacting. And on Voxer, you can find me at Mr. Underscore B780. All right, I will have to connect with you there. I'm fairly new to Voxer myself and, and starting to really enjoy it. I know a lot of people are sort of sort of hesitant you know i've gotten a few of the what's the point of that app but once you get in it you kind of get it and so hey we need to connect and start a group about something we'll we'll have to talk off air about that 
Thank you so much, Justin, for sharing your time with the podcast today. Hey, this has been a connection a long time in the making. I've been a fan of yours for quite some time now, and so it's good to connect in real time and hear more of your heart. Blessings, as I said earlier, on your new start, new home, new context there in Texas, and I hope it'll, it'll be an amazing year and, and look forward to more of your writing and more episodes of the Ycast. So Justin, take care and let's talk again soon. Yes, sir, thank you. Thanks for joining me today here on the Teachers on Fire podcast. For show notes and links from this episode, visit teachersonfire.net. You can also follow the show at Teachers on Fire on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And of course, if you did enjoy the content you heard today and my conversation with Justin Belt, please hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts. This episode was brought to you by Classtime.com, an assessment platform that delivers learning insights, giving you more time to teach. Class time helps you gain immediate visibility of your students' learning progress, build engaging lessons, share with other teachers, and create your own tech-enabled questions to complement your lesson plans. Classtime.com also helps you engage all students with collaborative challenges and puzzles that make fun an integral part of the learning experience. Start for free at Classtime.com today. As we wrap up today, I'd like to thank all those who encourage and support the podcast on Twitter. Eric Guys at Guys Got Tech Ed recently tweeted, Hello, all my teacher friends. I've been catching up on some great edu podcasts. I would recommend checking out TeacherCast, Teachers on Fire, and Teach Better Teams, Teach Better Talk. That was a lot of teach and teacher. <laughs> Hashtag free PD works for me. Well, thanks for that, Eric. Next, Sarah Johnson at Sarah S. Johnson tweeted, Thanks for sharing In Awe to Rise, MS Mac 4. That's Janelle McLaughlin. Love this interview with an incredible leader. Of course, at Mr. KV is one of my favorite people on the planet, and you should all check out his podcast at Teachers on Fire. And of course, Sarah Johnson was speaking to my last episode, an interview with Janelle McLaughlin, and that one has received a lot of support on Twitter. So thank you, Sarah, and thank you others who have tweeted out about that one. Brian Carpenter at Brian Carr tweeted, hashtag fresh air at five, walked 7.4 kilometers. Listen to, again, Janelle McLaughlin at MS underscore Mac 4. Share her passion for learning and her story of changing roles as an educator on episode 94 of Teachers on Fire. Thank you for your authenticity and encouragement as we head back to school soon. Hashtag power of Twitter. Hashtag balance LAP. And that last hashtag, Balance LAP, is a reference to Sarah Johnson's book. So these people are all connected. <laughs> so Sarah Johnson's book is one that she co-wrote with Jessica Cabin and Jessica Johnson. And that one was called Balance Like a Pirate. As you think about balancing your time and energy this year, that is a must read. So I'm going to point you back towards Balance Like a Pirate. And, you know, Brian has tweeted out very faithfully from this hashtag Fresh Air at Five. And I think that is his hashtag. And Brian, you can correct me if I'm wrong about that. But, you know, I really feel like for those of us trying to start earlier and earlier in the day, getting our day going in a productive way from an early time, that's not a bad practice that Brian's got going on there. So check out Fresh Air at Five. And who knows, maybe I will do some tweeting from that hashtag as well. And and I would love to see that catch on with some others. So this idea of just going for a walk and listening to podcasts is not a bad way to start your day and get your mind going. Next on Twitter, I've got Jason Jimenez at Jason Jimenez underscore. And he tweeted, enjoyed this during my morning commute. Pretty short tweet, but he had a great picture of an awesome car display with, of course, this podcast. And it was my last conversation. And again, that was Janelle McLaughlin in episode 94. So thank you for that, Jason. Really appreciate seeing how you're listening. That's always fun. Next up on Twitter, when answering a question about which education podcast she listens to, Debbie Tannenbaum at Mrs. Tannen B mentioned a few different podcasts. The Get Inspired and Innovate podcast, and that one I'm not familiar with. I'll need to subscribe there. She mentioned Ask the Tech Coach, and that's with our friend Jeffrey Bradbury. 
She mentioned Shake Up Learning with the great Casey Bell, and she mentioned this one, Teachers on Fire. And then she goes on to say, but I also love Google Teacher Tribe, and that's at G Teacher Tribe. Hashtag Edgy Duct Tape, and that's with the great Jake Miller, and hashtag Shooks and Gif or shooks and jiff, depending on your take on the jiff or the gif, hashtag edtechchat. So I have to say, Debbie, that is an amazing list. I think I listened to just about all of them, except that first one that you did mention. So thank you for drawing my attention to a new podcast. And thank you for including me in this awesome group. I can't say enough about some of the names that you mentioned there, and I really, really enjoy listening to them. Some of them have been away for the summer, and so I look forward to getting back to podcasts like Shooks and GIF. I don't think they've been producing lately, but I'm sure they'll get back to it soon. So thank you so much for the encouragement, Eric, Sarah, Brian, Jason, and Debbie on Twitter. You five were the fuel to my fire this week. And to all of you who have tweeted, retweeted, replied, engaged in any way with my content there, I really, really appreciate the support and my wonderful PLN as a teacher I value your connections so much, not just as a podcast producer and listener, but as a teacher and educator. I continue to rely on your expertise and ideas and inspiration on a regular basis. Teachers on Fire, I'll also invite you to check out the new Teacher Blogs podcast, a podcast for teachers who have more time to listen to blog posts than to read them. Does that sound familiar to you? The mission of this podcast is to amplify the voices of education writers that are seen, read, but need to be heard. Last week's episodes featured Shoes by Rose Pillay, and Rose shares in that one a great story of some bullying that she experienced. I guess the story itself is not great, but it is valuable, Uh, a bullying experience that she received as a child in school as a visible minority and she sort of unpacks that a little bit and draws some connections with the state of education and the state of the world today so really really good post there the next one was using goals and reflection to achieve growth by janelle mclaughlin just a fantastic thinker and goal setter and i've learned so much about driving personal growth from janelle and then the most recent one walking a fine line by our friend in Australia, Karen Caswell. And what a great post and a timely post that one was. Karen addresses head on this whole idea of promotion on Twitter and other social media platforms where educators hang out. And she talks about the fine balance between the tall poppy syndrome, the up yourself, the idea of being up yourself a little bit too full of yourself, And on the other side of things, being overly critical of people that are just trying to share their work, share their good ideas, share their enthusiasm and inspiration. And so I think it's a piece that is worth your while. All three of these were excellent. And there's nothing like hearing these blog posts in the voices of the writers. So I encourage you to check out the Teacher Blogs podcast. On that note, your voice could be next. All you need to do is use your phone's voice memo app to record yourself reading your own blog post and then use the share button on your phone to email the voice file directly to teacherblogspodcast at gmail.com. Response to this podcast has been so fun and listenership has grown each week. There's something really powerful about hearing a writer in their own voice, as I said. So if you are an education blog writer, This is an easy way to reach a larger audience. Why not give it a try? On the topic of blogs, if you do happen to be the sort that actually does have time. Oh, my voice cracked. I'm so excited. (laughs) If you do happen to be the sort that does have time to do some reading, why not drop by the Teachers on Fire magazine on Medium? This week, we feature just one piece there. It was called Lift Each Other Up by Caitlin Giordano, a fantastic writer and teacher of writing. If you are not following at Mrs. Underscore Giordano, make sure you do. And let me share just one paragraph from her piece. Caitlin writes, Legitimate critiques are necessary and helpful. They encourage change and growth, which we all need. But there's enough hate out there. Let's not add to it. Instead, let's lift each other up and affect real change in this profession. Because when we know better, we do better. 
And that was, again, from Caitlin Giordano in her piece, Lift Each Other Up. And that one, if you couldn't tell, was sort of touching on that same theme that Karen Caswell spoke to, and that is the the mood, the so a little bit of increased criticism on edgy Twitter lately. And I think Caitlin also, as Karen did, just strikes that fine balance really, really well about the critique and the healthy conversations that we all need to engage in, but not taking that too far in a way that smashes people's ideas and puts people down in a negative way. So I don't want to put any more words in Caitlin's mouth. Make sure you drop by the Teachers on Fire magazine and check out her piece and all the other great work that is happening there. The Teachers on Fire magazine is a Medium publication and you'll find Medium at Medium.com or on the Medium app. If you're already an education blogger, consider joining our growing writing team. You can continue to publish content on your own blog and you keep full credit and ownership of your content on Medium. Message Teachers on Fire on any social media platform for more details. Again, I'm your host, Tim Cavey, and I'm so grateful that you decided to spend some of your day listening to this podcast. I hope that in some way the content you heard today from my guest, Justin Belt, ignited your thinking and inspired your practice. And I'll meet you next week right here on the Teachers on Fire podcast. Take care and have a great week.